Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be going over Webflow's new components feature. Now, it's pretty much exactly like symbols. They're now calling symbols components. And while they're, they do share a lot of the same features, there are a few things that are new with components that I'm gonna cover in this video. In addition to covering what's new, I'm also gonna give just a quick overview of components and show you how you can use them um, to build professional layouts a lot easier. And I'm gonna show you some pro tips on how to use components that you might not have known about. So to use an example for this video, I'm gonna use this navigation bar. This is gonna be a really good example. Right now it's not a component. If I click on the element, you can see over in the navigator, it's not a component right yet. So to create a component, it's just like a symbol, we can go over to the components tab, which used to be called symbols. From right there, we can hit create component. However, Webflow also made a UI change where you can select the element you want to create a component for, go over to the style panel or the settings panel, and you can click on create component. What it's gonna do is just gonna open the components tab and automatically open a pop-up where you can name the component. I'm gonna name, I already have one named nav, so I'm gonna name this one nav2, and then I'm just gonna click enter or click on create. From there, we have created a component. Now, if I click out of the component, you can see over here in the navigator, we have a new feature. Without entering the component to edit it, we can actually open the component and see all the elements with inside the component. This is really cool. I always wondered why this wasn't a feature with symbols, but you can quickly see what's inside of a component without having to double click into it and edit it. That actually brings me to another change, double clicking in to edit a symbol, or now they're called components. You actually don't want to double click into a component to edit it. So from here you can see, as I'm hovering over this component, you can actually see all the elements just like you can when you hover over something that's not a component. If you remember symbols, when you'd hover over a symbol, the entire thing would be kind of green it would like highlight green and then you'd have to double click into the symbol to make an edit. If I open up or click on edit this component, you can see we have these things called properties. Now these have been inside of symbols before they were components, um, but I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what properties are. Basically, you can give each element within your, your um, component a property. So you can give each of these nav links a property and I'll show you more on what we can do with them, but you can do really cool things once you add um, a property to them. The reason I bring up properties is if we click out of the component and we now go and double click, like say we hover over the nav link and we double click into the component, what this actually did is it automatically created a property called nav underscore link dash text and that is what we want to do because I didn't want it to add a property now we already have a property in here that we didn't want to add so I'm going to undo that if you want to edit a component what you want to do is click on the component and then up in the settings panel or the style panel click on edit component or you can click on the element you want to edit and then you can go over in the navigator and double click on it and then it will open it up just like a symbol used to, and then from here you can go in and edit a component. So another really big difference with components is editing the values. So for example, I'm gonna duplicate this nav bar. Now we have two nav bars. Historically, if I would want to change the pricing to let's say home, I would just double click into the component, type in home, and it would update all the components across the entire site. However, as you can see, I changed the pricing link to home. However, it did not change it for the nav below that. And if I collapse the nav in the navigator, you can see they are the exact same components, nav two. However, they aren't updating globally. And that is because when I double clicked into this, what it did is it automatically created a property, a custom property for this specific component. Not all of the components um, all, not all of the same components. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undo that change. If you want to edit a value globally, you want to select the element you want to edit, 
and then double click into it through the navigator or click on edit component. So I'm going to click on edit component. Now it opens up the component just like symbols used to open up. And from here we can edit the value. So I'm going to edit, I'm going to say home. And now you can see it changed across the entire board. So those are the biggest differences between components and symbols. Now I'm going to show you a little bit more about properties and how you can use properties to build professional layouts um, just like professionals do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and for each of these nav links, I'm going to create a property. So first off, I'm going to click on edit component. Okay, so now that I'm inside the component, I am going to create a property. You can create a property for visibility. So to set it visible or hidden, you can create a property for the text. You can create a property for the link. And you can also create properties for other elements such as this nav element or this grid element. For example, we can create a visibility property for the almost every element. So for the nav link, I'm going to create a text property. I'm just going to click on this little light purple dot above the text box. I'm going to click on new property. So I'm just going to do nav link dash home text property. You can name these whatever you want. I'm going to create that property. And then for the link, I'm going to connect it to a property. I'm going to click on new property. I'm going to do the same thing, nav link dash home, but instead I'm going to do link property. So now we have the text properties and the link property set up for this link. I'm going to go through and I'm going to do it for the rest of these links and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so I went through and I made properties for each of the nav links and also the call to action. And you can tell if an element has a property attached to it by looking at the navigator and they'll be highlighted in purple, kind of similar to a collection list. So now with these properties added, you'll see that if I go to the settings panel, I can't actually edit the text or the link like I used to be able to. What I'll have to do is I'll have to click on the property and I'll have to click on edit properties. From here, it opened up a drop down and the property type is text and the name is the um, name of the property. And then from here down here, we have default text. So from here, we can edit the text of this property back to pricing. And you can see it edited the rest of the um, component. Okay, so now that we have these properties applied, I'm gonna show you the power of using these properties. So I'm gonna delete this nav bar and I'm gonna go over to another page that I have created. So see you have a product or service or offering and you have a landing page for it. Usually the best practices of when you have a landing page for like an ebook or something like that, you want to limit the actions that the user can take. So usually what people will do is they'll take out all the links from the navigation bar so that the only action that the person can take is to click on download the free ebook or do whatever their call to action is. Since we already have these properties set up for our navigation bar, what we can do is without clicking into the component to make an edit, so by double clicking into the component in the navigator or by clicking on edit component, we don't have to do that. From here, what we can do is click on pricing and we can click on hidden. I'm gonna go down through and I'm gonna do it for all of these links. And what you can see is happening is our name, nav link company visibility. That's what I named this property for the visibility for the links. As you can see, it is highlighted in blue. It is just like when we make a custom, um, a custom edit to a class for a style, it highlights in blue. You can see that there is an edit on that style. This shows that there is an edit on this property. If we click on it and reset, it'll reset back to the original. But what this means is if I go back to the home page, you can see our navigation bar here still remains intact. It shows all the links just like normal. If I go to the landing page, you can see now the links are removed. Now we can do um, some further things here. We can click on the button and then we can change the properties for this as well. So say for example, this button 
it links to the landing page. You can see here in the properties panel, it links to this page. Let's say that once you're on this page, you don't want it to link to this page no more. You want it to um, link to the ebook or scroll down to where your contact form would be to download the ebook. What you can do is you can change the properties from here, just like we did the hidden property for the links. We can change the link type to an external URL. Say I'm linking out to the PDF. Um, we'll just leave the URL blank for now. And instead of saying free ebook, let's say um, download now. So now we completely changed this call to action button. And if I go back to the home page, you can see this nav bar is still intact. Now the reason this is a very professional way of doing things is you can see we have, it looks like two separate nav bars. However, we are using the exact same component. We're not having to create separate nav bar components for each of these specific pages because then when you're wanting to go and edit the nav bars or edit a logo on the nav bar or whatever it is, you're gonna have to go down through each separate nav bar component and make those edits. So that was a quick overview of Webflow components. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And like always, I own a Webflow development agency. So if you're looking for Webflow development services or you're looking for Webflow consulting, there'll be links to that in the description below.